Greetings. Welcome back to uh, Sightgrinder A Hint at a Time, and I'm your host, Chris Perkins. And uh, so far in the videos, we've been looking at buttons. We saw text buttons, graphic buttons, and layer group buttons, and that's all well and good. But buttons aren't our only navigation option, and in fact, if anything, buttons are can be rather limiting. Uh, buttons, uh, while they can have hyperlinks set in the content manager and they can be changed in that fashion, buttons can't be changed in any other fashion. You can't change their text, you can't change their graphics, and you can't add new ones or delete them from pages. And this can create a problem sort of late in the cycle. After the site is created, your client has the site, and they decide they need to make a new page, and they make a new page, and but they don't have any way to link to that page. What they need is a new navigation element. And a button just won't suffice for that. And so one of the things that's very useful, and really every website should have, at least every SiteGrinder website should have, are text menus. And so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to see how to make some text menus, how to customize them in the design manager. Probably not going to get into the content manager because we'll be looking at that very shortly and seeing uh, menus edited there. But uh, we'll at least do those first two. So text menu is nothing more than a text layer. And uh, menus can be vertical with uh, multiple lines of text, or they can be horizontal. So I'll just make a quick vertical menu here. I'll just make some home our products, our uh, customers, and contact us. So typical corporate type of menu that we might have. And I'm going to um, modify this a little bit. I'll, uh, I'm going to add some spacing on the, between the uh, lines by increasing the space after the paragraphs palette. And uh, maybe I'll give it a good, uh, oh, good, good generous 15 pixels of spacing there, really make the lines stand off from one another. OK, so then all I have to do to make this into a vertical menu is just really just give it the menu hint. So I'll just call this my main navigation dash menu. And now this will be a menu. Now I may also want a, a menu, perhaps in the footer, and very often that might be a horizontal menu. So I'm going to make another menu, and I'll just, uh, once again, I'm going to drag out a little text paragraph here, and I'll just type in the same words we've got here. Um, uh, now when we're making a horizontal menu, it's all on one line, and so we're going to use it, we're either going to separate them with a vertical pipe character, or with uh, two or more spaces. So I'll just uh, use the vertical pipe character here. So home products, customers, and contact us. And this text is just a little too big here. And let's drop it down to uh, uh, maybe 10 points. There we go, nice little, little short menu there. And we are done with that. And I'll just name this bottom dash menu. So the dash menu hint tells SiteGrinder that a text layer should be interpreted as if it were individual items, individual buttons. And again, it can be vertical or horizontal. Vertical is just each menu item is on its own line. When horizontal, the whole menu is on one line, and it's separated by either double spaces or the vertical pipe character. And that's really all there is to it. Then uh, we go ahead and we just uh, open up SiteGrinder. And uh, it's going to scan that file. There's really, I shouldn't be any trouble here. And we'll just go ahead and uh, build this uh, page out, which will just take a very short second. Now, the uh, like text buttons, text menus, can be customized in the design manager, uh, which is really where the uh, design manager really starts to shine. So as you can see here, these two menus are all working. So as I roll over my mouse over, each little line is, uh, each little item is getting it, the underline underneath it. But we're not limited to just merely underlining. We can actually change these, uh, um, these styles in, in other ways. Now notice that the uh, Right now, the vertical, the main navigation menu is a vertical menu style, and the bottom menu is a horizontal menu style. So SiteGrinder has a different default styles for these two different types of menus. Um, if I were to edit this style right now, the vertical menu style, I would be editing the vertical menu, all vertical menus, the style of all vertical menus in this Photoshop file, or I can make a new style for it and use it uniquely. So I'll just uh, make a new style for it. I'll just say this is my navigation style and then I will uh, maybe customize it a little certainly on the hover state I'm going to change the background color and I'll just change that to uh, uh, blue here and see how that how that works 
all that works pretty happy. So now as I bounce around, I can see that the, the background color is uh, changing to blue. Um, I can also do things like um, perhaps in, the, in the, the normal state, I'll put a border around the menu items. And, whoop, and uh, got to make sure border is set to solid or something besides none. And now that has a border. And uh, I can also come down here to the menu tab and um, close this up a little bit. And uh, I can add other sorts of things. I can say uh, we want uh, uh, decimal numbers on all my menu items. Or, and I want those numbers to be inside the menu rather than outside the menu. Um, if I wanted to do that, I can control the spacing of the menu. Like, for example, negative 1. We'll tighten them up just a little to make that double border disappear. And I can actually change it. So I, if I don't want borders between the items, I can apply a border to the entire menu instead of um, just to the individual items. So lots of fun stuff we can start to play with here. Now, really, with this menu, I'm probably not going to apply um, any sort of numbers to it. I, that's not that rather unusual. Um, but I will... Uh, uh, um, and once you start using the um, the control down here to apply background border color items, this changes the way that the hover works. Now the the, the background color is no longer available uh, for something that can be uniquely configured in, on a hover because it applies to the whole menu, not the item. So we'd have to use a different way to highlight the uh, the the items on on rollover if we wanted to use that. Actually, I think I'm going to leave this on item, and I'll probably just turn off. Um, the border since I was just demonstrating it. And uh, let's see how that works. And go up, turn on my background color again. And uh, well, that's pretty simple, and I'm pretty happy with that. I can do the similar thing for the horizontal menu and style it up as well. And um, that's pretty much all you need to know about um, menus for the moment. Later, when the site, when these pages are finished designed and we've now um, sent them over to our site, We'll be able to add menu items, delete menu items, rename menu items, set links on them individually, that sort of stuff. So menus are much more flexible than just buttons. If I were to add a new page to my site with the content manager, it can immediately amend a new item, menu item right then when I'm making the new page that links to that, uh, that thing. So you know, even if you do are using graphic buttons, I strongly recommend using some, some menus as well for navigation. If they're not the centerpiece of your navigation, they should at least be backup navigation because as you or your client start adding pages, you're going to need ways to reach those pages and uh, um, the simplest, simplest, most straightforward way is simply to have a text menu that you can add items to. Otherwise, you've got to go back, make buttons in Photoshop and rebuild the page and get it over and you know do all that sort of updating and that's just a lot of work for a client that simply needs, you know, one extra page added to their site. All right, thank you very much.